Hey you guys, it's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Um, thanks for stopping by. I am coming to you today with kind of a little bit of a different video. So um, there's been like a lot of stuff happening recently and um, I wanted to um, make a little video about kind of my wax um, journey and the things that I've learned. These are just lessons that I've learned um, like in this hobby and in this um, environment that I wanted to share with other people. Um, I am not an expert. I'm not pretending to be an expert. Um, I um, just love this. I love this hobby. And so I um, have learned some things along the way and I thought I would share them with you guys. This is just food for thought. Take it or leave it. Um, again, I, um, I'm i just, you know, sharing what I've learned um, over my wax um, buying career. So um, the first thing is um, I have tried many a vendor and I think that vendors um, come and go. There are some that are like real stable and then there are some like new ones that pop up and get a lot of attention. There are some underrated vendors and um, I go through these phases of like really wanting to try new things and new vendors and I get on the hype wagon um, when I see things posted on Facebook or Instagram and I want to try new people out. So one thing that I have learned and I still have to remind myself of is that I shouldn't spend more than about $50 um, with shipping um, on a new vendor. And the reason for that is not because I don't wanna support small business or because I don't believe you know other people's reviews, but it's because things perform differently for me. My scent preferences are different than everyone else's and um, or than the other people's, I guess. And so giving um, a bunch of money to a vendor that might not perform for me um, leaves me with a bunch of wax that I don't know what to do with. And um, I feel like guilty tossing it and I don't want to send it to people in, um, you know, friend mail if it's not something that works for me, but I also don't want to melt it if it doesn't work for me. And so it just helps me to remind myself, like if it's a new vendor, try to stick to 50 bucks and that um, will at least let me try out, you know, different scents, different styles of wax um, if it's somebody that I haven't tried before. My second rule for myself is that I should not place an order um, again until I've ordered until I've melted some of the first order. So I don't know if you guys have this, but what happens to me is I try a new vendor, um, waxmelts.com, whatever, and I get it. And if it's amazing, if the quality of the wax is amazing, or it looks really pretty, or it came super fast, or if the scent is really good on cold, I'm like, I need to go back and get more. Like, what if they don't have it again? Or like, I, I go back to the website immediately. What I've learned is I need to melt that stuff and decide if it works, decide if I actually like the scent before I actually um, place a second order. Um, I should not place a second order based on receiving a first order. It should be based on performance and um, I need to remind myself that rules to live by um, because it's something that happens to me and probably others as well. Um, my third rule is I need to remember that they will pour more. Vendors will pour that scent or something similar again. You can get it again. I don't need to have 15 loaves of something um, because if I really love it, they'll pour more. And um, if there's a vendor that won't, they probably aren't my, on my, you know, like repurchase list anyway. So um, scent notes and things can be put in a custom, whatever. If I really need it again, um, you can reach out. Some are super responsive and super um, into like doing what a customer base wants. And so they will pour more. I need to just like, I need to tattoo that on my head. Um, rule number four is that even the wax world has influence influencers. So 
some people have these like channels like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok because it makes them money because they're, you know, um, advertising. And so what that means to me is a few things. Some people are doing reviews with particular motivations, whether that be because it's their job and they're getting money for it or because they're getting other incentives like free wax um, to review. So um, the reason, and, and I, the, like no shade, no hate about that. If if you're an in, a wax influencer and um, that is meaningful for you and that supports your family, like do you, cool. Um, but in my like career of waxing, I for a long time didn't really think about that. And so what it meant for me is that um, when these people would say, oh my gosh, this is like the best vendor ever. And I'd buy it and I'd be like, it is? Like, what's wrong with me? Am I crazy? So what would happen to me is I feel like I didn't get it. And it took me a long time to realize like their review is influenced sometimes by, um, you know, what they get out of the deal. And so just to remember that there are influencers, there are people who are super honest and they're like, I got this for free or, you know, I'm reviewing this, um, because I get a discount or I'm an admin on this page. And, and there are some people that don't do that. And, um, just everything you should take with a grain of salt and know that just because one person thinks it's great doesn't mean that it will always be. So, um, the next um, thing that I have is that you have to decide what your sort of moral line is. There are, um, all of these vendors are just people. And so um, it's the same thing as like large companies. Do you eat at Chick-fil-A? Do you shop at Hobby Lobby? Do you shop at Target? Like if, if there are social issues that are super important to you, and that there is a line that a vendor could cross that is your line, um, that's okay. Like if if it's, you know, a, a particular social or moral issue that even if they have the best wax on earth um, that you're not willing to cross, that's okay. Because these, th these vendors are just people and you might not want to spend your money to support people that are different than you. And then you might feel like, I mean, I'm, I'm not supporting their ideas I'm supporting the business like I'm supporting the wax whatever and so um they I know that sounds silly but in the wax world you will find that um that a lot of those things bubble up and so um just know that that's okay either way um rule number six for me is decide what your warmer line is so for me I I have one warmer from um, Walmart or maybe Amazon that um, I use in my office at work and all my other warmers are Scentsy warmers. I like Scentsy warmers. I like how they look. I like that they don't carry a lot of heat. I prefer them. And so for me, I am not willing to buy new warmers to melt wax. I will buy new Scentsy warmers because that's my jam. But for other people, um, if wax performance um, is solely based on the heat of the warmer or the heat of the bulb or the type of warmer, and you're willing to like do what you can to make that wax perform, cool. You just, you need to know in your mind that all wax performs differently in different settings. So if you're, if you're willing to spend a bunch of money on wax and then you want to spend a bunch of money on um, warmers that like fit what is needed, whether it's heat or element or wattage or whatever, just know that, um, that really influences your performance. And I know that there are some vendors that I can't buy from because I'm not willing to replace all my warmers or any of my warmers. Um, and their wax performs like needing a higher wattage or a different element. And I, I personally have chosen like those just aren't vendors for me, but for other people, they're like, I don't care about Scentsy warmers. I don't want to give, you know, money to MLMs or whatever. And so I'm down for buying Walmart warmers and I can purchase from those vendors. 
like that's fine too. Just know that that's kind of where things are. Um, Kim from Kim Kim Hart's organizing um, said this, and it's like one hundred percent true, and it is: don't buy a loaf in something that you haven't smelled. So you might really love boom boom type or sweater weather or volcano or whatever. You may really love a bread scent or a pretzel scent or a fresh thing and it might sound amazing. But if you haven't warmed it yet, do not buy yourself a loaf. Buy a smaller amount. This is just me, but the last thing you want is a loaf of stuff that doesn't smell like you like or doesn't perform like you like. Even if it sounds really great, pass on a loaf, get a smaller amount until you've smelled it. That to me is great advice and I try to live live by that. If I haven't smelled it, I don't need a loaf. Um, the next thing is that hot irons and blow dryers are your friend. So I know everybody uses the term waxident, but I, um, the way that I get rid of wax is that I um, take the dish and I pour it into a trash can um, and that sometimes leads to accidents where I have wax on my carpet or wax on my walls. And so the way that you can um, handle that, you don't need to post in your Facebook group, hear me first. Um, if it's on carpet or any kind of fabric, take almost anything, a paper towel, a uh, um, paper bag, something, heat up your iron, put the paper bag or paper towel on the wax, heat up your iron, iron over it, it will come up, you will be fine. If you have stuff on your walls, heat up your blow dryer, blow dry that wax, wipe it off the walls, not an issue. The only time I've ever had any issue and it was just a small one is um, when you have flat paint that has like no gloss at all to it. Sometimes depending on the wax, um, especially soy wax in my opinion, or coconut wax, I've had a few coconut waxes, um, can be a little bit oily and that can um, change the, like it can kind of show that oil stain on your wall. But otherwise, um, hot irons and blow dryers work great. Um, Rule number nine for myself is that your nose will change. So I started and I was like clean fresh all day long and I still am clean fresh to the core. But I have really come around to bakery. I've really come around to spicy scents. Um, those scents were not in my wheelhouse to begin with. There are things that I bought that when I smelled it, I was like, I'm never melting this, that I have really come around to. I also really loved floral when I started this, and I still love floral, um, but there have been scents that have changed me, that I have been like, nope, not anymore. Those are, that's my girl, my big girl, and then her little babies, Haas and Latte. Um, guinea pigs are great. Um, so just know that your nose will change over time, and so melt the wax. Um, and the very last thing that I will say to any of you, whether you're new or old, whether you've been here for a day or a year or 10, um, that wax is a hobby. It should be fun. And if you're in a group or you're following a person or there is something stressful about wax, whether it's like ready to ship versus pre-orders, just move on from it. Unfollow. You know, only do pre-orders. Um, you know, go to, to vendors that only have stock on their site all the time. If it stresses you out to have a big stash, melt it. If you love to have a collection, collect it. Um, if chopping stuff is stressful for you, buy stuff you don't have to chop. Um, but ultimately, all I'm saying is that this is just a hobby and it's supposed to be fun. And if the community stresses you out, step away from the community, just do the melting. If you love to watch videos and that's part of your jam, do it. If you love the drama of wax chat or some like one of those like Facebook groups, follow the train wreck. If you don't want to watch, unfollow. It, it's, 
it's that simple. And I know that like sometimes it doesn't, when you're like in it and you're stressed about it, it doesn't feel that way. But the truth is that it is. Um, the one thing that I will always have to remind myself and a lot of us have to remind ourselves is that there will always be more. And sometimes I feel like the fear of missing out, the FOMO of it, um, or the hype of it sometimes has us overspend and then whack our wax hobby or even our wax addiction um, can be a little um, a little bit more stressful because it starts to affect our finances. So, um, you know, if, if I had a rule 11, it would just be don't overspend, like just um, buy what you can melt and melt what you have and um, be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves and enjoy this. As Etta says, you know, enjoy your sense, like enjoy your journey. Like this is just about fun and and a hobby. And so those are just some like wax tips that I have. Um, if you have any wax tips, things that you've learned from um, your journey, put them below or make a video. I'd love to hear it. Talk to you guys soon. Bye y'all.